Hello Geeks, how are you doing today? Welcome to the channel and topic of this video is STL Custom Allocators. So we have seen all the STL videos and we haven't used custom allocators. Why? Because the STL default allocator is good enough for almost all the situation. But if you want to have some low level optimizations, you can use custom allocators. And in this particular video, I'll tell you how you can do that. The another side effect of this video is that or rather a good side effect that you will come to know how a steel algorithm works. So let me start with a simple vector of type int. I'll say v1. I'll say v1 dot pushback, not pop back, it pushback. I'll put 10 in here. And just for sake of it, I'll just print it. And say C out. So let me go ahead and compile this to make sure that everything is working fine. Yes. So when we declare a vector like this, we actually do this. We declare an allocator of the type int. This is same as when we write vector int. So if you go ahead and compile it, everything work as expected. So this is the by default parameter added by STL for us. Now, if we want to replace this allocator, we can do that by creating our own allocator called myalloc, for example. It should be template type. Okay. Now, I can replace many functionality of allocator in myalloc, but I'll recommend an easy way to do it. Rather, you just derive from allocator. The reason for the same is that allocator contains lots of functionality and you don't need to repeat all of them over here. In this particular case, now you can easily use myalloc. Myalloc with int. So if I just go ahead and compile the code again, things will work as expected. Because whatever allocation functionality that needs to be present is being used by using allocator because we have directly derived from it. Now, there are two functions of interest. One is allocate, another is deallocate. So the allocate function signature looks something like this. Allocate, uh, it takes uh, size. Okay, and let me put a print to make sure that allocation request size equal to uh, size handle. And I'll return new over here, new of type, uh, let's say of size. Okay, so this is my allocator function. You can have your own allocation mechanism over here to optimize it to the extent possible. But for simplicity purpose, I'm just using new. Now, if I go ahead and run the same program again, let me just increase the console. And if I go ahead and compile the same code again, you can see that allocation request size is equal to 1. 1 means 1 of type, which is if, this, if it is an int, it will take 4 byte. Now, since I have requested it one time, it is saying 1. Now, let me request it another time. So, let me just put it saying that 20. And now, if I go ahead and compile it, let's see what happens. Now, next time allocation size request is 2. Okay, if I go ahead and put 30 over here, let's see what happens. Now in this time, you will see that the allocation request size is 4. Okay, so after 1, 2, 4. So what if I put 40 over here and as well as 50 over here. Okay, let me just go ahead and do compilation again. And if I run it, you can see that allocation request size 1, 2, 4, 8. Every time it increments by 2. So what is happening over here is that once I put push a vector 10, it's allocate a memory of size 1. Since I put it next time, it allocates a memory of size 2 because in vector, the elements are stored contiguously. So if I push the second one, it needs to store next to each other. So it creates a memory of size 2. When I push the third item, it exhausts the memory of size 2. So what it will do? It will again double the size to 4. 
okay so for push back 30 or 40 it will be 4 and when i push the fifth item it again doubles the size to 8 so this is the way actually vector work in allocating memory to make sure that it always allocates contiguous memory what if i if i put more than 8 let's see i put 60 70 80 and then 90 okay let me go ahead and compile it and if i just do a dot out you can see that after 8 it's 16 so whenever a vector exhausts the size of the allocation it allocates a new vector of size which is double the size of the existing vector this is to make sure that it doesn't reallocates a memory every time a new item is been pushed back otherwise the pushback complexity will be quite high that's the reason this pushback is called amortized constant time sometimes it takes more time but most of the time it takes less time because every increase it increases the size of the contiguous memory to double now come to deallocation function so the signature of deallocation function is void deallocate the pointer type is type ptr and again size is size let me put a print saying that deallocating size equal to size and then and i'll just say delete ptr okay and now let me just get rid of this for loop printing because i no longer need that let's see what happens you'll be surprised to see the output so clear compile clear again and run so the output is be jumbled around so we should be expecting that when this v1 gets out of the memory the deallocation gets called but you see that deallocation happens intermediately in between why so first time let's see that it comes over here the allocation request size is one for the first pushback when the second pushback happens the vector creates a contiguous memory of size 2 but at that point of time it doesn't need the existing memory which is already having a size 1 so it deletes it when it comes to uh, third item it allocates a memory of size 4 okay but after allocating this memory of size 4 contiguous block it doesn't need the existing 2 which was there earlier so it deletes the 2 when again it goes to 8 it doesn't need 4 so it deallocates the 4 when it goes to 16 it doesn't need 8 so it deallocates the 8 and finally when the vector goes out of the memory it deallocates 16 so if i just put get care over here you will see that this is what is happening so let me clear it compile clear again and run so you can see that deallocation size 8 has happened if i put a enter when the finally vector get destruct it deallocates the final memory which is being held by it so this is the main functions which you will overwrite to allocate and deallocate memory in your custom allocators and you can write this custom allocator for almost all stl containers okay so this is the way you use your custom allocator i'll always recommend it to derive it and overwrite the functionality otherwise you will keep on writing many more things which is not at all required and now you understand that how this memory allocation mechanism work for vector it may work differently for dq or for many other containers so this is the way you write custom allocators in stl i hope i was able to explain this in the easiest possible way if you have any questions or queries write in comment section thanks a lot guys thanks for watching please like the video and do not forget to subscribe thank you